I hope it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, buddy. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, every, every weekend I have a problem. Last week I did Romel and it was restreaming. Yeah. It was, it was, okay, here we go. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome everyone to Crema. Crema stands for Combat Ready International Mixed Martial Arts, but basically, mostly, most, mostly we talk about pro wrestling. And tonight, I am so glad that we have one of the Philippines' own uh, superstar, uh, <laughs> one of the godfathers, one of the head honchos, <laughs> one of the uh, senorita, uh, Mr. JDL. Thank you so former, much, Chili. Yes, the former <laughs> PWR guy. And, former PWR, uh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, he's the man. But anyway, how you doing, JDL? How you doing, man? How are you? I'm doing good. Just, you know, still staying home, staying safe. Just if I do go out, wear a mask, every social distance, everything. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing relatively well compared to a lot of other people in the world. So I hope everyone's doing great. Whoever's watching That's this, like, wherever you are. Yeah. That's good, brother. I hope, I hope our connection stays well. You know, I've been having <laughs> problems ever since I've been doing this. I think I've been doing this all, for about a month now. Every yeah. time I do it, I always have some technical problems. But anyway, man. Uh, I'm glad that you came on. I'm glad you agreed to come on. You know, we just going we just going to chop it up a little bit. Talk about you know um, a little bit of the past, a little bit you know, mm -hmm. and go into your future, what you, what you plan on doing, and what, what what's coming up next for JDL and um, yep. you know, all those things. So first, I want to say, um, how did you get started in pro wrestling? Man? I mean, what what got you started in pro wrestling? Um, well, I've always been a fan ever since I was like. Four years old i've always been a fan you know seeing stone cold and the undertaker like bloodied up and beating the the shit out of each other i've, al I've always been a fan since then but it wasn't right. until like i graduated from college and then i saw that there was this facebook group uh called philippine wrestling revolution where i wanted to try out like they were looking for people who wanted to make their own promotion like yeah so i joined initially saying that okay here I'm, i want to be a wrestler but if it doesn't work out i can always help you guys out with marketing and I right. ended up becoming a wrestler. It's just oh, take okay. A, take a faith, yeah. Nice. Now, now this group. It was um. How many are in the group? Was it like um? Like it was just like a chat group, or how did it get started? Did you start that up, or did someone start it up? Or? No. Uh, someone else started it up. So technically, I never really founded it. I, I the person that actually started it up was Frankie Thirteen. If you, if you remember him from MWF, he's the one who made the Facebook group. So it was a group of people. I think there were around, around under 100 people there just like wanting to help, wow, help it grow. Like people wanting to, hey, mm -hmm. if I become a wrestler, this is what kind of character I want to be and stuff. So it was a lot of fantasy booking. No one really like making moves or anything. And then it wasn't until like okay. there was a group of guys that like decided to have a meeting and like think about how to actually do this. And yeah, mm -hmm. after that, there was a training day and I'm not sure if you've met Bombay or like if you've heard of Bombay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Bombay Suarez, yes, yes. Bombay Suarez was the first guy <laughs> to, to teach us wrestling even though all he had for knowledge was like a, an old DVD of like John Cena training back in UWF and that was it. Ah, uh, so, so okay, so you guys, when you, when you started out, like you train by watching videos. Yeah, definitely. So you're saying, yep. Okay, that's that's good. You know, hey, I mean, there's a lot of people who did that. If I'm not mistaken, I think the Hardy Boys did that. Look where they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, it, it could be done. Um, a lot of a lot of people think that um, you really need to be in the ring setting, which you do eventually. But you can start out. Yeah. Especially now, especially now with uh, YouTube and social media and stuff and everything going like that. And so, so all you guys were, 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 you guys got together. Where did you train at? Where was it a boxing gym or outside? It was, <laughs> it was actually a funny story. It was actually like, uh, it was a gym of the armed forces of the Philippines. Cause like Bombay had some connections. He had like an uncle there or something. So it was in a boxing ring inside like, uh, the complex of like, uh, like, a like a multi, multi, uh, sports complex for the armed okay. forces of the Philippines. So oh, nice. it was it was a legit boxing ring. Like it was just it wasn't like a legit boxing ring. It was a it was basically a looked like a, a, a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12 boxing ring. 
uh-huh. where it was just raised cement like they raised the the square for the cement and then mm-hmm. they put like a they put plywood on top of it and on top of the plywood they put a tarp so we were bumping our backs <laughs> on that shit like, you know like that's not good for our careers at all like, we were young and stupid and like felt we were invincible so we we did uh, that shit for like around a few months and okay. until we actually and found we- the place now, what year was this? What year was this when you guys started this? It was 2014. Like, it was... Ah, 2014. Yeah, seven years ago now. Wow, that's been a while. It's been a while. Wow. Okay, <laughs> okay. All right. That's, but, okay, because uh, we're going to jump forward and jump back a little bit. Because when I came to the Philippines in 2015, you guys did a show at MCS. Yeah, yeah. And that was a huge... I had... Yo, I'm telling you, since, not since ECW... And I went to a, a indie show, and there were like six hundred plus people there, and media yeah. everywhere. I thought I thought somebody was there. I thought shit, I didn't know who was there. I thought John Cena <laughs> was coming. I was like, yo, what is this? You know? And so yeah. you guys had only been training a year prior to that. Yeah, exactly. So we've only been training. We trained like in the boxing ring that I mentioned. We trained there for around a few months until we eventually found a new place with another boxing ring. But like this time, it's not as bad. So we started mm. training there. We trained under this guy who used to train in San Diego with Hernandez. His name was mm-hmm. Draven Sloan. So he was the guy who kind of showed us the ropes the first time around, like knowing how to bump, knowing how to roll, do stuff like that. And then, yeah, we kind of decided like around mid-2014, hey, let's put on like a small test show for like friends and family. And like only nice. like 14 people came, came around to watch. <laughs> like, That's good. Yeah, it's good. But like, that was like getting our feet wet, essentially, where, uh, you know, just to try it out, try to see if there's something here, something we can do. And that was what we kind of needed to like light a fire under our ass. Like, okay, this is possible. And then until eventually where we decided to like, let's actually put on a show. And right. the, first, the first show we've ever had was actually in September of 2014. So imagine this, like just around where, where was that at was that at mcs too was it was already at MCS? at mcs yeah by the time it was already okay. at mcs that was our first ever venue we only like okay. had eight months of training not probably not prepared <laughs> at all said like okay we're dumb enough to put on a show so let's put on a show <laughs> we really thought that there were only going to be like 20 to 30 people coming in like on the first mm. show there were 100 people there and we were like what the fuck is going on really <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah, wow, that's good. So, we, okay, but now you say you grew up kind of watching wrestling, but did you reach out to any of the old Hanoi wrestlers to get, like, any advice? Did you guys ever consult them to say, hey, this is what we want to do or how are we going to do it and all that shit? No, we never did that. No? We, knew, we uh, knew about them. We definitely knew okay. about them, but they were wrestling back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And, like, this was already 2014. So, like, I don't know. Okay. Like, we didn't know how to reach out to them. <laughs> if we maybe had connections with RJ and RJ TV, probably we could have. But, like, we didn't at the time. So, like, we were, well, that's cool. They, they did. They <laughs> but, like, right now we're just going to do whatever we, okay. like, we sought out to. But, like, you know. Right, uh, right. Never really okay, worked so out. You, you didn't want to dig up the old bones and shit. That's, that's, that's <laughs> nah, basically nah. what you said. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cold. That's messed up. But anyway, <laughs> it's all good. You know, you that's good that you guys started out, did your own thing and everything else. Um, now who were the who were like the officials of the of the PWR? I mean, like, was all you guys like head honchos or was it like you guys designated certain guys to do because when you run in the show, you know how it is when you run a show. You gotta yeah, have yeah. someone, you know, yeah. here, you gotta have you gotta designate different you know, positions. So so who took the charge out of your group? Who decided I'm gonna be the man that's gonna do this or we're gonna or we're gonna vote? How did shit go? How did this shit go down? Uh when when the shit started like back in 2014, I wasn't actually part of the head honchos. It was actually uh they like the the initial people who had a meeting, they kind of like took a vote and okay. then they decided that it was Yusuf Mir that was gonna be like the head honcho for that time. So he was okay. head honcho for a while and then you know uh i think i think his vps were william elvin and uh veronica liton 
Yeah. So okay. Like, yeah. All those guys are in NWF now, which is which yeah, is cool. Exactly. You guys kind of kind of broke off and everything. We we'll get to that in a minute, in a moment. But <laughs> yeah. so so <laughs> so so you guys were doing that for a while, and then uh, how did you guys? How many shows did you have uh, before you figured out? Okay, we're gonna we want to do this show here, this big show. And MCS mm -hmm. and, and it got so big because like yeah. I said when I went there man I was like yo this is what's happening you know? I think I think the one that you went to that was where like TV5 was at right so yes 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 that one it was just like a culmination of having multiple shows there so our first show there was September 2014 that show happened in around August of 2015 so it was around we probably had around three or four shows before that big one but I think it was just because mm -hmm. we were able to get out that word of mouth the social media was able to like help us out like yo there's this these group of idiots that are putting on wrestling shows in uh in <laughs> the square like the, the main moniker of our show back then was there are people wrestling in the dingy makati cinema square mall where they sell mm -hmm. guns and bootleg dvds <laughs> that was, <laughs> exactly <laughs> that was the mystique of it like they like when people heard about it they would be like what the fuck i gotta check this out to make sure it's real so I'm pretty sure like right, a lot of right. the early people who are watching PWR were like really casual fans. Just like, is this like, is there actually wrestling here in the Philippines? I'm not sure how often right. they came back and everything, but like for those mm. few first few years, that was. Fun <laughs> to see. And I and I watched you guys evolve from like you know from that show on up to where you guys were you know pretty much now. And uh, like I said, we were, I, when I went there, it was hot as fuck. And I was like, yo, it's hot as a dog in here. Yeah, man. You know, the production. And I think I told you guys when I first met you guys, the production was off the chain. You know, coming from where I came from, ECW wrestling, you know, being up top in WWE, OVW. You know, from, you know, doing um, indie shows, you guys had a, a hell of production. The wrestling part was like no okay you guys you were not doing what we what i was taught and what i but you but you were doing your thing you know yeah. you had your fans you ken warren uh uh, uh classical warren leo you know you guys ralph you guys had your your your, your fans in your in your in your niche and everything you know but the rest of the thing i was like yo they need help big time to dl <laughs> but i but i couldn't i could not um I could not get over the the the, the fanfare and the, and the amount of people that was there because in America, man, that's a dream on an indie show. Six hundred people, you know, and, and then they buying merchandise and buying food and all that. So so after that, did you guys ever have a show that would top that after that after that show? Uh, oof, not for a while. Uh, the next show that actually topped that, if I remember correctly, because like. After that show, that was the last time we were ever like, no, that was, we had another show after that, but that the show after that one was the last one we ever had in Makati Cinema Square. So we had to move uh, venues. So we've been moving around venues, like the next venues we would get, we'd get okay. around probably 200 to 300 people. The next time we actually topped that was, I suppose, like in my, like the actual topping of it all was like in 2017, where we had a show with Billy Sway. This was, a little after you got got injured from that show, yes, like, yeah, yeah, like Black okay. Zilla, yeah. A little after, <laughs> I can't remember that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, like, you're the rip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was that because, like, I think at that show we reached around six hundred to seven hundred people. Also, like, it was in oh, wow. Bayanihan Center. Yeah, we're not allowed back there again. But like, we had a show in Bayanihan Center. <laughs> Why you didn't go back there? What happened, guys? <laughs> it was like uh, like a couple of shows after that. Uh, sadly, Main Max injured his leg, and like we had to bring an ambulance in and everything. Like yeah, so they didn't want to be. Oh uh, yeah. They didn't want to be connected with the violence like angle of it, but like you know that that happened. But like for uh -huh. that show, it was the show where I had a match against Billy Suede. I think we had around seven hundred people there, and yeah, that we would we would eventually top that so <laughs> that's a good thing nice 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 speaking of billy sway how's billy sway man i hope he, if you're watching billy sway which i know you're not but anyway what's up brother <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think billy's doing good he's he's chilling over there in canada i think i'm not sure how good their pandemic response is but it's probably yeah here, you yeah know? probably hard and everything but it but yeah um uh that was you know like I said, that was like, you know, for me, I was like, wow, you guys are really doing it, you know? And then you guys, 
you guys started doing uh, the boot camp uh, yeah. practices. Yeah. What, what, why did you guys start doing that? Was it because of the response of the, the show that you had on the uh, MCS? It was people wanted to become wrestlers and you had too many. And so what made you guys, you know, break it down to that? Well, yeah, we there like after our our first couple of shows, there was a lot of people yeah. that wanted to join, so we kind of wanted to capitalize on people wanting to join. So that's why we said, "Oh, hey, let's open up boot camp, get to, get a little money for the company, and at the same time help some people live out their dreams." So that's why we opened it up. It mm -hmm. was never really to like thin out the herd. Essentially, like if we saw that you were passionate enough and that you worked hard enough, yeah, you were probably gonna make it. But like if you were being you know, a little, you know, a little bitchy about it. And then like complaining a lot, like, okay, maybe this isn't for you, sadly. Right, right. Yeah. right. So the boot camp okay. worked out uh, both ways, basically. Like to get the people who actually really want to do this, live out their dream and then mm -hmm. help them rise up and become stars. Nice, nice. And now, 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 now to get, not to get too in personal, what, whatever happened, because, you know, that's some, that's some shit that happened. But you guys broke off, yeah. right? So... Yeah. You guys broke off, and there were some people went certain ways, and certain people went other ways. Yeah. Um, how did that? Was that just because of too much bravado? I mean, too much. Uh, um, um, I don't know, machoism. Uh, you which, know, wait, uh, I gotta ask first. Which, yeah. which time are you talking to? The first time or the second time? because uh, <laughs> I think the first time. Let, let's go with the first time. Let's go with the first time. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't know when. But I, I just know there, there was a break. I, look, I just know there was a breaking off going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, so the first the first time, the first time like like where uh, some of the guys like left and like created MWF. I, the the one the thing there it was basically a lot of uh, creative differences. I would like to say like to sum it all up, it was creative differences. There were people that wanted to do things this way. There was another group of people that wanted to do things a certain way. So I I guess like to just like. Put it amicably, people just like decide to, you know, we're just gonna do our own thing, and then our group was just gonna do that own thing. So, you know, otherwise, like if we mm. if we try to stay together, it would have been worse. Like people just butting heads all over. So, like you know, for the first for the first breakup, it kind of worked out for the best. Like now we have two promotions. I wait, now we have three promotions here in the Philippines. I think I'm. If I'm yeah, 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 three. Yeah, if I'm counting yeah. right, so you know, like that's more more of the industry to go around. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, the first the first breakup, I didn't know anything about you know because I didn't know anything about you guys, what 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 was going on. Yeah. All I knew is, by the time that I after after my thing with the Black Zilla thing and I was hurt, it was it was now down to your second breaking off because yeah. <laughs> that's where that's where uh, you had some guys come out and they started AOW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that yeah, one, and they asked me to come in and yeah that was the oh yeah I, we had three breakups now that i think about it anyway uh for the oh, second, it was three damn yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a growing it's, it's a young industry <laughs> we're all young and stupid basically yeah <laughs> it's like this is bound to happen but you know for the <laughs> second one this one was basically use of so like well with what happened there it's like you know we like a lot of shit happened basically a lot of things like happening to like getting stranded yeah. on a different island uh mm -hmm. people feeling like mm -hmm. he's not performing up to task so you know like it just kind of naturally happened that yusuf just had to leave pwr like for right. everyone's sake kind of got right. uh, that happened and then he started aow again i honestly like with everything that's happening with everything like hindsight is 2020 if I had a different way of like fixing things or like going about things, I would have like, but you know, Hello. like th things happen. Can you hear uh, me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. But yeah, yeah things you broke happened. Up a little bit. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But yeah, just things happened. But yeah, I, I don't regret them happening. It's just that, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shit happens. Yeah. yeah. It's for the, I, I, I hate to use this term, but it's for the greater good of the, of what PWR was back then. So the business. Yeah. Business. Right, right, right. It, it, and it was because it, it's, it started off, it broke off. Um, I think the other two promotions, MWF and at the time AOW, they, they did their thing, you know, I was part of AOW yeah. and for that one show, we did our thing, you know, and so without, without the breaking off, that would have never happened, you know what I mean? MWF probably would have never happened. And AOW 
would have never happened. Now, WUW Philippines probably would have never happened. So that's a, it, you know, it, it looked at the, at, I think it looked bad at the beginning because, you know, you know, like a breakup, like any breakup, it's going to look yeah. bad. But if you continue to grow and, you know, you do your certain things, uh, it turned out, it, it turned out pretty well. You know what I mean? Despite, yeah. despite all the heat or whatever, that's, that's just the nature of the game, you know, nature yeah, of the beast is. and all that shit, you know? So, um, but um, when I was with AOW, um, and I gotta say, man, when I was with AOW, our main focus, you know, I know from what I saw, from what I could get the vibe from, my thing was I wanted to teach the kids, the young people how to wrestle, basic, basic wrestle and, 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 you know, get them to their first match because yeah. we, 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 would, we, would, we would talk and so, not talk, but we, we were told, you know, so much bullshit. So anyway, I try to tell them, no, don't believe this. You can't <laughs> believe what you hear. You know, there's no gonna be no TV deal and all this shit. Yeah. But they were they were adamant about that, which is okay. But, but I think their their main their main focus, a lot of the guys, a lot of the uh, the rest of the, at that point, they really wanted to be known like you guys at PWR because it was like you guys are here. Yeah. To me, I saw from where I'm from, I'm looking at MWF was here. Mm -hmm. And then now AOW is trying to rise. And so yeah. our main focus was, you know, have a great show. You know, if this show pops off, you know what I mean? It, it could be like a rivalry because that's all I was hearing, you know, back and yeah. forth, you know, this and this <laughs> and this and that. And yeah. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying, me, I'm an outsider, I'm a foreigner coming in. And I'm trying to figure out where's all the heat coming from, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. training, I'm just training you guys, you know what I mean? I don't, what, what the fuck is going on? And so, because you guys, you guys, you were always nice to me, always good to me. Um, Ro, uh, Red, all you, all you guys. I, I had no, I had no issue with you guys at all. Probably stuff for um, what's his name? Jimmy. Oh You're talking about Jimmy? No, 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 no. <laughs> no There's one cat. There's one cat that called me out my name, and I wanted to get him. P uh, P P Peter Peter. Peter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so sad. So, yeah, yeah. That, that cat. Anyway. So anyway, so anyway, that was, but other than that, man, you guys were, you know, you were cool with me. I was just, I was just trying to figure out where was all this heat coming from? But then I, I started hearing stories and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, yeah. God, this is all good. But at that time, by that time you had become like really the head man in PWR. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like the president or something like that or whatever. Yeah. Where were you trying to take PWR at the time? <laughs> Honestly, like at the time, all I wanted as the president of PWR was to keep having shows and having fun. <laughs> that was my only main goal. It would have been nice if like, like, you know, we got people abroad and stuff or like people would like see us or like know about us. But my main mm -hmm. goal was just to keep this whole company afloat because it's not easy. There's no money in this business like here in the Philippines. Thank you. <laughs> there is no money. Like, like no, yo, I'm, I'm sorry. Like I probably ruffled a lot of feathers back when I was president. I, I'm pretty sure I ruffled a lot of feathers back when I was president. <laughs> I, but my main thing is like, guys, I don't have a lot of money to pay you. I'll pay you this much, but this is all I can do. You are free to walk out if you want to. But like, if you want to keep wrestling, this is all I can do. So I, right. I was straight up with a lot of people. I was straight up that, yeah, like for for the longest time, like. There, there was a stretch of shows like we couldn't even pay the guys for wrestling. Like I was just telling mm. them, I was paying for the shows out of my own pocket just so that oh, we could shit. keep having shows. And then thankfully, uh, when that show in 2017 happened, we got a big boom. Like, okay, I was able to get all of my money back. We got money to spend also. So like that fixed everything for a while. But like, you know, <laughs> it worked out. I didn't yeah, have to yeah, yeah. out of my pocket anymore. But yeah. Yeah, like, that, was my, that, that, was my, that was one of my things, man. That's, that's really one of my pet peeves in pro wrestling is, is you don't, if you don't pay your fucking wrestlers, man, or your referees, whoo, that's some issue with me. I, I'm ready to fight. I don't care who I it know, is. I don't care, get my ass kicked. I don't care, I'm just ready to go. You know what I mean? So, I know, you know, I, I, know. I, and I, I learned that when, when I first started wrestling and I had to really, really hold myself back when that happened to me in March uh, 17th, that night we had our, 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 um, our wrestling match. So anyway, uh, speaking on that, speaking on that, um, how how did you guys, as a promoter, because I've never really been a promoter of pro wrestling, how do you pay your guys? How how does that work? Um, do you do you wait 
for the revenue off the door? Or do you already have it, you know, a set aside that you're going to pick your wrestlers? You know, how does that work? Well, back when we started out, back when I took over, uh, it was basically, hopefully, we could get the revenue off the door. That was the first everything. Because, like, we didn't, like, we only had money to put on shows. Like, well, I only had money to put on the shows. Like, I'll put on the show. Hopefully, we can make the revenue back to pay me back. And then if we have extra revenue, that goes to the guys. But if we didn't, I, I would have to apologize to everyone because we didn't have money. <laughs> but eventually, like once we got the groove of things, once we started gaining up that uh, revenue and stuff, we got to a point where before every show, we would set like the expenses and the cost, right? Before every show, we would cost it out like, okay, this amount goes to the, the wrestlers. So we would put that aside already. And then whatever le- is left over goes to the company. The sad thing is there are mm-hmm. times that... <laughs> It you know it there are times that we like whatever we put aside dwindles so much that we have to rely on the revenue again, but yeah that's that was the nature of the game back then we really couldn't like if we didn't like get a sponsor if or if we didn't like get someone to invest in the things we it was hard to pay for everything. Right, and the sponsor that's that was another big thing um, I saw here in, in and we, we we did that we were taught that i was taught that also in america to try to get sponsored but we really don't focus on sponsorship a lot in america we 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 fo- as wrestlers we focus on our gimmicks like our our t-shirts our uh, pictures and things like that to make our money excuse me so when i came when i came to the philippines you guys are talking about sponsorships and all that how does one go about getting sponsorship so so if i start a, a wrestling promotion and I want, I don't know, Red Horse because I drink a lot of Red Horse. Yeah. I want them to be. I want them to be my sponsors. Do I? How do I have to? I have to contact San Miguel Corporation. I assume, yeah, yeah. right? And then, yeah. and then you know, go from there, right? Yeah. Uh, honestly, Chili, I'll be. I'll be straight up with you. The easiest way to get a sponsor is to know someone in the company. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Not, it's not. It's not what you know. It's who you know. Who you know. There you yeah. go. Mom but like, so we we could be we could be like very we could try hard we could email them cold we could go to their uh, to their offices and like try to pitch, but mm-hmm. like the success rate of that is like less than ten percent a lot of the times. Wow. Most of the most of the sponsorships that we get aren't even monetary. It was like oh the the we have these leftover stocks of these like potato chips or these leftover stocks of these drinks that you guys could give out. So. That was a lot of the sponsorships that like, back when I was like running the thing, like that was most of the sponsorships I got. We really got lucky right. with a uh, sponsorship with Yellow Cab because it was like, okay, it, yeah, okay. we got that one sponsorship with Yellow Cab where they featured pro wrestling, like they were featuring uh, individuals who were hungry for their crap. So we kind of got hit that target market and also the one with Potato Corner. But yeah, a lot of times it's really more who you know than, than just giving it your all. Now, 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 you say you, you a lot of times it came out of your pocket. Now, when you have got when you have special guys come in from out of out of the country, you had to pay that, or the sponsorship pay that. Like you guys had Jeff Cobb, you had TJP, you had Billy Swade. Uh, you know how how do you how do how do they get paid? You know when, because I know they cost a lot: plane ticket, yeah, hotel. Okay. So just letting you know, like at that time when we had that big show getting these big names, I was I wasn't president back then anymore. That was Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that was red. So like when I was president, I would like I would tell these guys, okay, here's what we can do. We can probably pay for your hotel <laughs> and then like <laughs> take you out for food, but <laughs> flights, that's gonna be hard. So there was only like there was one show where we got really lucky. It's because these group of Japanese wrestlers wanted to come to the Philippines and they decided to like pay for their own flights. Uh, it was this group of like Emi Sakura, Masa Takanashi, and DJ Nero mm. from PDT. So these were like such nice people, the greatest people I've ever met. Uh, they were so willing to just like fly here like on their own penny. But like, of course, I, nice. I took care of their accommodations. We took them out right. wherever they wanted to go out. <laughs> I, there, was, there was a story where like they flew over to Cebu, right? And they uh. couldn't speak a lick of Filipino. <laughs> I had to be on call. So I took a leave from work. I had to be on call in case like they were in the wow. taxi and then they needed someone to talk to the taxi driver. So that was me just like <laughs> <laughs> on, 
on like their help from 20.7 because that's no the that's, that's how you that's how you make your connections and everything like make people right. happy so yeah like after right. that after that like a, a couple of shows after that that's when i decided to step back from becoming a president and then that's when red took over oh okay good i want to give a big shout out to all our listeners uh we got cash miss froggy my sweetie that's my sweetie topeka apple white got the old man chad he's he's watching uh martin martin came in got carmen and uh got my we got my boy ray but but ray bunch dino uh yeah so we got ken ken watching and so yeah we got a lot of people watching so yeah thank you guys for watching but uh go international now now you wrestled internationally like uh where where have you wrestled internationally I've wrestled in Singapore, in Malaysia, in Thailand. Uh, okay, nice. Those, yeah, I've, I've technically wrestled in China when I was there for the WWE tryout. <laughs> yeah, those. Oh, yeah, okay, those, okay. Those, those were the four. Those were the four, I think. Uh, so, yeah. going to that, speak, speaking on that, speaking on that WWE tryout, that was in China. I thought, I, I didn't know that where that was. I thought for some reason it was in Singapore. <laughs> yeah. So, that was in China. How was that? How was the tryout for WWE? Whew. Uh, let me just say, you warned us, Chili. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you you warned us. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, whew, four straight days of just working out, doing girls in the ring. Not mm-hmm. a lot of like we did some promo classes, but not a lot. But like yo, like my body every night was ready to break down, and then we have to do yes. it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that's that, and that's just four days you had. You know, that was imagine, just four days. Imagine if you were down at the performance center. You know what exactly. I mean? And uh, a lot of people don't know that. You know, people people think that when you watch television and you watch wrestling or anything, but we're gonna stick with wrestling. They think that you can just uh, go in there, take a couple of bumps, and you're gonna do what you did on the Indies. Yeah, Hell yeah. no, Hell you no. would not do none of that shit. That's why I tried when I was training the guys, my, my 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 students, the warriors. I was trying to say basic, basic. Let's not hit the ropes that much. You, what they want to see is the basics because they got their Ray Mysterios, you know. Mm-hmm. They got their ricochets, you know what I mean. They got their Roman Reigns, you know. You need to stay grounded and learn the basics because that's what you're going to go through, and and uh, you know, and you really have to keep your body in shape and. It's a it's a whole process, man. It's, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> so so when you got there, what happened? Who was um, with you when you when you went from PWR? Uh, it was me, Ken Warren, and Crystal uh, back then. So yeah, um, when we got there, first off, it was a lot of media. Like we know, we we had our medical checkups, and then we, we did some media. But then, like the next day, that's when we like it was go time. Like first stay, like first off, Matt, like Coach Matt Bloom was there told us to do a lot of push-ups, a lot of squats, a lot of sit <laughs> Like, yes, all right. Here's what we're yes. <laughs> but like, you know, like, uh, it was hard at first because I, I prepared my body a lot. I did a lot of my dieting. I made sure I, my cardio was up. Thankfully, I didn't, like, break down during any of the training sessions. Nice. But I was at the most ready I ever was, and I still mm. got my ass handed to me. That was how bad it was. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah, that's how it was when I went to the, back in 1996 when I first went to WCW Power Plant, um, and I tried out for three days. It was 30 guys. There were some professional football players there, some other wrestlers, and it was only at the end of those three, four days, three or four days. There was only three guys left, and I was one of them. Mm-hmm. That's where you saw me with the picture with Chris Benoit and, and Stephen Regal. Yeah, uh, and I'm gonna tell you, Sergeant. Buddy Lee Parker had us doing, I don't know, man, probably a thousand squats a day. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he, had these, he, he had these five gallon buckets and JDL, he had these five, got five gallon buckets and he said, okay, go, go, go get you a bucket. And we were thinking, what, you, what are we going to get a bucket for? What are we going to do? Just turn it upside down. Yeah. That's going to be your bucket. That's going to be your boyfriend, your girlfriend for the next three days. And we were like, what? And squat. Squat, squat, man. And God, I mean, man. people, people falling out like that. But because I wanted wrestling so bad, I made it. It's just that I didn't have the money to go to school there. You know what I mean? But yeah. 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm glad you guys tried that out, man. So now you know you really have a profound respect on pro wrestling. Not saying that you didn't have it before, yeah. But I'm quite sure now, with yeah. with with going through that, you're like, okay, <laughs> hell, hell yeah. <laughs> And that's how it was when I was in OBW. When I was in OBW, you know, I went, I was in that class with Bobby Lashley, John Morrison, yeah. Chris Masters, you know, all those guys, and Anderson. And that, I mean, every day, man, we we would go in and wrestle every and train every day. I think except for one day we had uh we had a show, and then we had to do a class with Jim Cornette to critique the show. Yeah. But you were in there every day, man, practicing, practicing. Doing the international, doing the international, do it again. Run, run a match. Do this, do that, do, and 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 now look how long it took. You know, look, you get you see guys like Bobby Lashley and, and Dolph Ziggler. You know, look how long it took them guys to get to where they are now. Yeah, you yeah. know, and so it takes a long time to to really master this thing. And um, you know, it, it's just that's just that's the nature of the beast. But where where do you want? the Philippine wrestling to go? Like, is there a scene here in the Philippines? Um, and if so, and if not, uh, where do you, where do you think it should be going or what direction? Um, and how do you, how do you perceive it to be? I mean, well, right now there's no scene because of the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Most exactly. definitely there's no scene because of the pandemic, but like, you know, I, Back when I was in PWR, I see, I saw where it could go. I definitely saw where it could go because Filipinos like action and entertainment. And what's more action and entertainment than wrestling? So, mm-hmm. you know, like you can, <laughs> you put drama into it, you put comedy into it. Wrestling can have right. everything and anything and everything. So I definitely like, once the pandemic is over, I do wish, I do hope there's going to be a scene again. I do hope the scene starts up again. And I definitely see it like, coming to the point where probably not on TV, but it's probably something that a lot of people would watch online. I'm hoping, okay. I'm hoping. TV yes. might be a little bit too hard to break first, but maybe down the line, maybe 10 or 20 years, who knows. But for the immediate future, like maybe once the pandemic yeah. is over, it's definitely something that people can decide to watch online. And it's not just like the action mm-hmm. of wrestling. It's also like for the the thing that I was very interested, like when I, when I was in PWR and like when I was like interacting with the audience, they really are, uh, they really are into the characters. They really are into the people right. behind the characters also. So there's something there. It's not right. just about the wrestling part of it. It's also about how people like you or like how you are as a character too. So there's something. There's definitely something. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play devil's advocate with you a little bit now here. When you were at, when you were in PWR or just PW your 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 former company itself, why didn't other companies like you guys? What was it about you guys that people just did not like? And what I'm saying is other promotions. Oh, you know, yeah. there's other wrestlers, not the, not the fans, but I'm saying just uh, what was it about you guys that that stood out that made you stand out and people were like you guys think you're i would hear the chatter i would hear the shit yeah like you know know, i I would i would hear the chatter i didn't want to hear the chatter but i would hear the chatter um Mm -hmm. i think it's mainly because we've been the longest in the game we're the guy we were the guys that wanted to be you know we were the guys in the position that they wanted to be in so okay it's 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 I, i wouldn't like i wouldn't say that we were like an easy target for everyone else but like you know if you're, it's like how the WWE is always the butt of joke in other promotions. Like people, okay. like AEW would make fun of WWE, uh, Impact would make fun of the of the WWE back then. So like, it, in my honest opinion, I'm just really thinking that it was because we were at the time top dog, and okay. everyone wanted to be there. And of course, we had our group of guys also that would like like to stir some shit up. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and like I would like I would always be wondering why would you do that? Why like we're already like very peaceful right now so why would you try to stir shit up with other people? <laughs> yeah i remember that yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know i'm like we're not we're not exactly squeaky clean on that end also like we of would, course of course yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah, course so. no one no one is right no, no exactly one is no one yeah. is you know my thing was i wanted to do a, a wrestling promotion also like you know i just never could because my wife my wife 
at the time that's sick. But yeah. I was trying, I was trying to do like a merge. I called it, you know, I wanted to see some guys from PWR, some guys from AOW, some guys from NWF. I wanted you all you guys to come in collaboration and work a match and this and that. But I knew that there was some heat, a lot of heat in the dressing room. <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. like, I can't get this guy to work, this guy, because this guy don't want to like this guy, this guy don't like this guy. But I see where you and um PWR, not you, but you PWR and MWF collaborated some. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, some guys went over there and then some guys came over here, whatever. Um, I thought that was that was pretty cool. I I I wish that there could have been more of that for the for for the growth of the Philippine scene because, like I said, there was only three at the time three three companies which is still is with PWR, MWF, and now WW. But yeah. uh, do you wish that there was more of that collaboration back, um, back then or back then? Even <laughs> even, even, even <laughs> moving forward, even moving forward, do you think that there could be collaboration? I, I definitely think there could be collaboration, but back then I didn't want to deal with like all the <laughs> being in between uh, two like two separate <laughs> companies. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, not, yeah, you could be to, a part of it. Yeah, <laughs> not I'm not trying to put anything anyone under the bus, but like there would be some people that don't say what exactly is happening, or like we would be surprised that someone was booking someone. I'm like. Why don't people do us? <laughs> like I, I definitely think I definitely think collaboration is the way to go. Like collaboration is a way to like boost each other up. I like looking back at it right now, back now that I'm not such a young and dumb kid, collaboration mm -hmm. and boosting each other up, that's the way to go. But back then there were a lot yeah. of egos. Yeah, shit. <laughs> heat was high, heat was hot. Oh yeah. Hot. Heat was hot, yeah. hot, hot. And yeah, you know. <laughs> Just, just didn't pan out. Like, I'm, I'm telling you one thing. Like, well, this pandemic is shit. But like, it, it gives everyone a lot of time to look back and think about things that happened in the past. And like, True. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, uh, I wasn't like uh, immune to that. So I also did a lot of thinking. That's why you know stuff happened, and that's why I'm here right now, former yeah, PR yeah. person. Yeah. Would you, would you, would you, in moving forward? consider working it like let's say the pandemic was off you know and we got back and someone asked you hey jdl can you come in and work such and such can you yeah. work to are, are is there still heat animosity with certain people or would you just squash that put it under the bus and say fuck it i want to work i want to i want to do wrestling you know um let's, let's move on with this shit you know I'd say there's still some heat with some people. Like there are still some certain people that I would never work with because I don't trust them with my life. Like I won't, I won't constantly try to destroy their life now. At least I won't try to keep throwing mud at their names. But like, right, right, right. I, I still wouldn't trust you with a. You don't want to get in the ring, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no, stay, stay away from me. But that, yeah. You, but, you, 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 you won't want to take a suplex from someone. <laughs> you don't like. <laughs> yeah. I. I I won't, I can't trust, like, I can't trust you to throw, uh, like, I, I don't know what the, I don't know, I don't know what the metaphor is, but, like, <laughs> I, I can't trust you yeah. as far as you can, <laughs> and shit like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's still some, st still some of that happening, and, of course, like, if there is a company that comes near me, I'll take a page out of your book, Chili, and, like, tell me how much it is first. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, you know, but but you know, when I wrestle with you guys, you know, I, I remember I specifically remember Red said, Hey, Chili, I can't pay you. I said, Bro, I'm not here for the pay, you know. It, yeah. It's like even with NWF, I, I told him, I'm not really here for the pay, you know, even though they even though Terry paid me and everything, that yeah. was good. But I'm not, I'm, I know when I, you know, a, a young company, you know, is trying to build itself or whatever, uh, and plus, you can't pay me when I'm in New York, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. I done been, I done been there. You're trying to get where I already been. So even if you have the money, you say, "Well, I'm not gonna pay Chili because he's old and he's just <laughs> bro." No, it would it would not hurt me not one bit because I've already been to the mountaintop. Yeah. You are trying to get there, and it will probably never get there. No time soon. But anyway, I'm just saying, you know, for me at that time, I was like, I'm good. You know what I mean? Just let me wrestle, whatever, and get in there. And thank God you didn't pay me because I would have took your money to the hospital when I got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, um, it, it, it's just one of those things, you know, it, I tell every wrestler, you know, that I, I come across, you know, you, once you hit that gorilla position, you, you 
people out. Hey, man, you gotta, you gotta, you have earned something. You gotta get some type of thing. You know yeah. what I mean? It don't have to be a lot, but you have to get something. You know, um, and that's my, that's just one of my pet peeves. No matter where you go, that's the first thing people want. You want to get paid because you're doing a service. Your services, yeah. you're entertaining exactly yeah. someone. You know what I mean? You're entertaining someone. So um, that that that's one of those things. But now moving forward. Let's let's talk about really quick. The I'm not gonna say I'm not I don't know your situation, what happened with you and PWR. I hear things, whatever. Yeah. Um, but what is your in what is your take on like the bullying situation in the Philippine wrestling? Uh, I can't say for other wrestling companies because you never you haven't, you know, been around a whole bunch of other wrestling corporations or companies, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so I'm just I'm I'm, sp- I'm specifically talking about here in the Philippines. Uh, because there have been some incidents where I've heard and seen, you know, people being not just in PWR but other companies just being bullied yeah. uh, by other other wrestlers. What is your take on that? And being that you have been such a high top top dog in your company, former mm-hmm. company, and I know you've seen some things, you probably heard some things. Um, what is your take? Uh, my take is just like you know. My, we already like released a statement on on it. We like the PWR also released a statement on it. But my take on it, my main take on it is like people just have to be nicer to everyone. That's my only take on it. Like you know, a lot of the things like a lot of the people that like you know try to make fun of other people, they don't really see what that other person is going through. You don't know their struggles. You don't know what their background is like. You don't know what they have to do every day just to survive. So right. you know like. I mean, there are some people that could say like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being an asshole when you in fact are. It's basically mm-hmm. like for me in my specific case, like I'm not talking about anyone else. I'm not speaking for anyone else but myself. In my spe- specific case, it's been like a long time coming. I've been really tired as the president for a while, seeing a lot of stuff, like being told a lot of stuff also, knowing like her- hearing stuff, like being talked about behind my back. So it's just, a long time right. coming. My own take of it was I came into wrestling just wanting to be a wrestler, just wanting to have fun. Right. The, the sad thing about it was back when I was in PWR, when I was like, when I thought I was having fun, I was actually having the most fun going abroad and like wrestling for other companies because yeah. I didn't have to deal with the <laughs> politics. Like, <laughs> I didn't have to deal with the logistics of the thing. I didn't have to deal with the money and everything. I was just there to wrestle and entertain. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, it was, it was a long time coming and then I'm not I'm also not, uh, what's the term? I'm not, I'm not squeaky clean either. I was also like a part of, I was also a bully in my day. Mm-hmm. And then that's okay. why I saw how I was. I saw how, how bad it got for me. I tried to change how I am. And then I still yeah. see like it happening like on a, I hope it was in a daily basis, but like I still see it happening here and there. And yeah. then I just decided, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand for this anymore. I might as well just go. So that's, mm. that's that's what it is. That's what it was, and I know there are a lot of people that are probably angry with me right now, and their anger is valid because you know I just up and left. I left whatever mm. I built here, but I hope that whatever I built there and is left for them is enough to help them out in the future. Because I don't want whatever happened to me to happen to anyone else, and I don't want this to be the death of Philippine wrestling. Because I still right. want it to grow. I still want it to right. change. But like, I hope that the people who were mad at me leaving was because I did it because I wanted to make sure that I would still see the end of whatever day I was going through. Nice. Because it was bad. It was really bad, Chili. Mm. It was really bad for me. So Wow. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I, 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 I commend you, man, for, for coming out and saying that, you know, and, and, and uh, you know that because that's a real person, real man, woman to really acknowledge, you know, their wrongdoing in whatever situation it was. You know what I mean? And, uh, and 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 hopefully that you learn from that, and that you know if you are back in another locker room somewhere else or whatever, moving forward, whether it's, whether if it's your own promotion or someone else's promotion, that if you see it, you'll just automatically step to it. You know what I mean? You got to be the bigger man and say, hey, yo. Whether you get your ass kicked or not, this is not cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because like you said, some people some people cannot handle it. You know, some people like me, you probably can handle it. You know what I mean? Because I'll just, we just go at it. You know what I mean? But 
there are some people who are very they're fragile, you know what I mean? And they've never really been in a fight. They never really, they don't understand it. And so when you start getting picked on and, you know, it's like, oh no, you know, I've been getting picked on in school and my, my home with my cousins or whatever. And now I want to be a wrestler, but you know, here it comes again. And so a lot of people don't want to, they don't want to deal with that. Or they can't defend themselves. So it's good that you have the courage to, 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 to say that, man. And, um, you know, I wish you well in that situation. You know what I mean? Um, because I heard about some things and, but I didn't know, I didn't get into the whole detail, but when yeah. I, when I heard you left and you weren't the only one left, there was a, there was a couple of guys, there was a, lot, there top, was a lot of us, yeah. top, top dog guys that left. And I was really <laughs> shocked. And, you know, I think I messaged you. I was like, yo, what's going on? <laughs> I, I, I saw, I saw it somewhere on, on, on the internet and I said, what? These guys are not, and I was like, what's going on PWR? Because you guys were here, you know, and it's like, you know, like, like any other boy band or girl band, yeah. you know, so I was like, wow, you know, but it's, it's all good, you know what I'm saying? But moving forward really quick. Now you wrestled T, uh, JP. what's his name? How was JP. That? <laughs> yes, that was, was that? cool. Man. That, that was cool, man. Like, all right, the, what, what can I say? He's like, he's been at, at this game for a long, long time. All yeah. I could, all I could really like, I could try. I could have tried to fuck it up. He would still have found a way to make it, like make shit, like make, <laughs> make lemonade make out it of. Make it easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I was just like in the match, like just listening to him talk to me, and like, oh fuck, like I'm, I'm learning like a thousand different things right now, and I'm just like in a headlock mm-hmm. with you. So that was right, right. Exactly. That, <laughs> that's what. That's what a lot of us, I think, are looking for because we don't have the veterans, we don't have the people who are the journeymen to like come over yes. here a lot and like teach us a lot of things. So, like, yeah. yeah, wrestling with TJP that was definitely a highlight in my career. Did you did you wrestle Jeff Cobb when he came? Was that no? You? That was that was Quattro and Chris Panzer. Yeah. Okay. 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 But yeah, when you wrestle, when you when you when you get in the ring with a veteran, man, that's the only thing you can do is just learn and listen. And uh, just follow, you know, you don't try to be, you know, you don't call shit. You don't, like, oh. you do not do, <laughs> you do not call nothing, you know. And so you got to, even if you're a heel, you know, because we, I was taught that as a heel, you got to yeah. call everything. But if I'm in the ring and I'm a heel and I'm going to get someone like a Ray Mysterio, I better not call nothing, man. I better be like, okay, sir, wait, what's next? <laughs> You know, I, I better be right there bumping and feeding, bumping yeah. and feeding. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so that's a lot. That's a lot of things that a, a lot of young wrestlers have to learn um, moving forward. They, have, they really have to learn that. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad you, you got in the ring with him and you, and you felt that you learned that. You know what I mean? Um, because that's, that's a great experience, man. Not too many people can, can say they did that. You know, when I watched the, the show, with, I was on the show with uh, Fabs and um, and uh, Tajiri, and yeah. Fabs was right there, man. He was he was right there for Tajiri. You know, you don't want to, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to call out with Tajiri. You know what I mean? Exactly. You just yeah. let him do his shit. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and I and they and they had an excellent, I mean, I mean, sweet match. You know what I mean? So that's a good thing, man. I'm glad you you experienced that. You know. Yeah. And, Thank you. Um, Thank you. You know, you, you couldn't have done anything better than that. So, so what, what's in the future for for JDL? Man, what is the what is the PWOGs? What is the what is uh, the- so the PWOGs? The hashtag PWOGs. It's my tag team with Ken. We've been tagging for like a couple of months before the pandemic hit. And right now, what we're doing is we're putting out wrestling content. So what we're doing is like we're putting out wrestling news, but we're trying to do it in a more funny way because there's okay. a million different wrestling news sites out there. And we're trying to like, you know, just present it in a way that's funny for us. And then hopefully a lot of more people watch. So actually nice. like, people listening to this, they can actually subscribe to the hashtag PVOGs on YouTube. You can check us out there. But yeah, uh, right now, I think I'm not, I don't know about Ken, but like, I would definitely love to like keep the tag team thing going. I do know, like we have this kind of like discussion between us, like, you know, what is, what if people from abroad want to book us as a tag team? What are you going to say then, Ken? Because like Ken, right, right. <laughs> Ken was really against this idea initially. Like he did not want to be part of a tag team until eventually, like it was us in the WWE tryout. 
like you know like on the last day they would call like who would have like a uh, uh, like a, a mini show for example they would have people on and have wrestling matches and I was like I was I was looking at Ken like okay why are they not calling our names because we're one of the few workers here along with other Singaporean uh, guys and stuff and like it was on to the tag team match and then they called Ken and my name as a tag team <laughs> like, wow Exactly what you wanted. <laughs> if the w, if the WWE isn't enough to let you know that we're good enough to be a tag team, I don't know what will. <laughs> right, right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's so so so. What about uh, working in other companies here? Um, like you said, I think we talked about that. But if they called you, you you're willing to you you're a free agent. You're a free agent yeah. now. I'm definitely a free agent. I mean, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be closed off to not talking to them. Like I, I could discuss, you know, discussion is always good. Uh, but we'll have to see because, like, again, the pandemic, it's, it's not like, I don't think it's going away for a while. But, yeah, I'm always open to discussion. Yeah, like, exactly. I, that's why I put my email there on my Twitter and my Facebook for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what about now? Now, here's the one for you. What about if PW says, what if PWR says we want you to come back for one show? You have to show? consider that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me let me Jerry Maguire it a little bit and then tell them show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jerry Maguire, me brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, brother. That, that is awesome. Yeah. Well, anyway, man, I want to wrap this up, man. And uh, JDL, man, I really appreciate you coming on, taking time out, uh, coming on my little show here. And uh, man, I wish you the best. And uh, it was it was great talking to you, brother. No, no doubt. I, I wish you much, much success in this business, man. And uh, keep moving, man. You know, stay humble. You know, keep your nose clean. You know, and uh, you'll 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 find the right path. You know what I mean. So just just keep working, it, man. You know, and uh, hopefully we can do this again. Tell yeah. Ken I want to get him on also. Maybe I get both of you guys on at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> that that that'll be chaos. That'll be chaos. <laughs> Yeah, we got we got to do that, man. We yeah, got to get both yeah. you guys. Yeah, yeah. definitely, job. definitely, definitely. No we'll doubt, do that, brother. Too. So uh, I appreciate you, brother, man. Thank you a lot, appreciate man. You too. Thank you Thanks so much. A lot. Tell tell people again. Yeah, tell tell people again where they can see you again. Where, where yeah, they can so reach you. You can reach me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's at Senorito JDL. That's with a Y. And also, we're on YouTube at the P hashtag PWOGs. We do wrestling content every Sunday at 8 p.m. We're gonna have a show drop off tomorrow, actually. So that's cool. But yeah, just, you know, hit me nice. up. Nice. Cool. Well, I appreciate it, brother. You be good, man. Take care. Thank you so much, Chili. Take care also. Thank you. Thank you.